and I am back. Uh, this what prompted me to come back was uh, one of our practitioners out of FP. His name is uh, Christopher Locken. He um, hit me up and he had some questions that were very, very relevant uh, as it related to testosterone, even the last live feed that I did. So then I, I got an exchange with them and I said, hey man, let's go ahead and uh, let's see if we can actually um, put this on a live feed and talk about it. In case you guys don't know, uh, Chris is a practitioner out of um, Arizona. I'm not sure what, what city, but he's out in Arizona. Uh, he said he's coming here in a second, so which is good. Tony Rangel, what's up, dog? We'll just wait for uh, Chris to tune in. It's a very relatable circumstance to um, people in general in the FP community. And he has arrived. Come on, guy, what the heck? I think he should be joining us here shortly, hopefully. Yo, what's up, Maddie? Chris, what's cracking, brother? Good, man. So, yeah, Except we are. Chris, Chris and I were talking uh, uh, earlier. Uh, g explain your background, Chris. Uh, your background in FP, what you're doing currently, and then even see if you can even go into kind of like what your circumstance is, because I feel like it's uh, your situation starting to reflect that of a lot of practitioners who who came in, who were starting a new career that were were struggling a little bit in the beginning, and now they're starting to get there. They're starting to gain momentum and this this uh, this this premise of um, th this new reality of of, 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 a, of an access to abundance is emerging, but then there's this question of whether or not it's worth it to, to make the pursuit happen or not. So um, go ahead and explain your background, what you've been doing, what your, what your experience has been, and then we'll, we'll kind of get into it. Um, so I started FP maybe like around 2017. But prior to that, I was a martial arts instructor. I used to teach jujitsu and um, I made the transition because I was dealing with a lot of problems in my body and uh, it got to the point where I couldn't really function anymore. I couldn't sleep properly. My digestion was messed up. So anyways, so I got into FP right from the start. I knew that I had to go hundred percent in just, and honestly, man, like what really made me re reach that realization was uh, just all the posts you would make just, uh, you know, explaining your position and what is it you do. So once I started watching your posts and paying attention, I'm like, okay, this is not something you can do halfway. I got to go. So what, was, what was it that got you to be convinced? What specifically convinced you that my perspective, because anybody can make sense out of a reality, right? Yeah. I mean, anything can make sense. What exactly about the way that I was making sense made sense to you specifically? Well, when I was in college, I had a physics professor that um, he was talking about the effects of gravity on, on someone's body as they age. And I remember one of the very first posts, I saw from FP was talking about the effects of gravity on the human body over time and how traditional lifting makes that uh, the compression worse over time. So you age, you don't age as well. So that was the thing that really got me because I never really heard someone talk about just like natural forces acting on the body and the consequences of it. Okay. Wow. Okay. So you you have a you have, so you you had a physics background to some degree then. I, no, I didn't have a physics background, but I did. You take, had a you you had a physics background in the sense you were you looking at things from a physics background you were you were using using that lens to kind of view what, what, what i was talking about i guess yes yes yeah ever since i was a kid i've, I've always been interested in um 
science because growing up my my I, I told you just now like my parents were cane workers and a lot of my uh family my uncles they were car mechanics so um like I, I don't know man it's different like when you're in a third world country people look at like the way they operate is a lot different they don't there, there's less room for uh nonsense so where, where were you born like i was born in uh, trinidad and tobago oh shit okay well, when did you move to the yeah. to the to the u.s I moved to the U.S. in '96. I was about maybe like 10 years old. Oh wow! Right now I'm, okay. I'm 34, so I, I've been here most of my life. But I remember okay. a good chunk of what it was when I was back home. Yeah. But yeah, you were you were saying that pretty much what people were concerned about there is different than what they're concerned about here, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I just remember like uh, like growing up, there were there 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 wasn't like a lot of television. Like on TV, we had like three channels or two channels. There wasn't much to do so people would like my family would be more concerned with like okay uh how, like do we have food like i like my family growing up was we weren't poor relative to Tri like trinidad and tobago standards but like if we wanted to have something to eat my i remember my grandma she would have to go in the back and she would have to actually find spinach leaves like get it out of the the, the, the weeds or whatever um and then we would have to go to the butcher shop and actually get you it was there, there was not a lot of groceries back then so like the time you spent during the day was, okay, we need to focus on, okay, we need to get this, 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 and this to cook our lunch for today and maybe have some dinner. It's just stuff like that. Crazy, bro. So yeah, yeah. so you had a you had a more, I guess, life from a fact offensive to you because it's like that's what, I feel like that's what I, what I to promote in the society that people stop worrying about the dumb shit like, like i was i was watching this documentary or, or like it was like a little short like mini documentary of, well i watched a few of them yesterday i actually yeah. went, went out on a bit of a binge yesterday just like trying to to see what, what i guess what's out there in terms of enter, kind of like infotainment but i saw one talking about how if the if the volcano in yellowstone exploded that pretty much it would it would like do have significant damage on the entire planet and whatnot and then I'm like thinking about, okay, yeah, are we wow. doing anything to prepare for that? Like, is there, are there things that we could do to prepare for that s said event? Are there things that we could like, are there, are there ways that we could possibly change uh, the path so that we wouldn't have damage with that? I feel that like, like we're always under a, a, a present crisis. It's just people are too stupid to typically be able to see that that crisis is in front of them. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like somebody like, hey, look, I'm drinking you know, 12 beers a day or whatever. And I don't see like I'm getting hurt right now, but it's like, yeah, well, in five, 10, 20 years, you're going to pay the price for it then. But because you can't see the, the, the problems immediately or you're not able to recognize them, doesn't necessarily mean that they're not there. So for right. me, I've always kind of taken that approach where we're always kind of in a crisis. And I came from a similar, from a similar background, you know, like I, I, uh, we were real poor uh, when I was, my first memories were of us being very, very poor. But not necessarily really being poor because my parents were really good about saving money, but we lived very poor. Like when they're right. like my, my parents pretty much what happened with my parents when I was like, uh, I think I may have been like, I think like four years old or three years old. Uh, it was when the, when the peso devalued in, in, a, in Mexico, my parents had managed to, to save about a hundred thousand dollars at that time uh, doing just pretty much migrant labor. And that's a lot of money to be saving on, on, they worked their asses off essentially to, to save that money. Well, anyway, they they wanted to go. They wanted to move back to Mexico, take the money, save it, go back to Mexico, put it into a Mexican bank, and then uh, hope to live off, off of some of the interest and then have their own businesses out there. Well, they go back, and I don't know how long they were in Mexico for, or we were in Mexico for, but essentially the, the peso devalued by like seventy five percent or something like that, and uh, yeah. essentially pretty much overnight they lost I think like seventy five thousand dollars. Like three quarters of it just fucking wiped out like that because of inflation, bro. It was fucking crazy, and so uh, I was I was raised in a situation where my parents had to learn to be very frugal with resources. And ultimately, on my end, when I when I make most of the decisions that I make, they, I, I'm very frugal about everything that I do. I'm like wherever I put my money, I have to make sure that I'm going to put it somewhere where it's worthwhile. If I'm going to put my time in some place where it's worthwhile, so I, I think it's just really interesting that your background based upon what what kind of enabled you to find sense of what i'm talking about about lead came from the the background that you that you have specifically yeah i mean i yeah man it's i i just have a 
yeah, I guess I have a different background than most people, I guess, that grow up in America. Don't get me wrong. I have had, I have been here for 24 years, and I'll, I'll be lying if I say I didn't get sucked into the BS here. Um, but I think having my early years as a kid back home definitely helped shape a lot of my uh, personality and decision-making. Well, think about this, bro. What I, what I do find is interesting, because you told me that you came from that environment when you were – and you got out when you were 10. My girlfriend, Kathy, she she lived in El Salvador for most – Sorry about that. She lived. She, she lived in a in, in a El Salvador for most of her youth until she was about nine years old. And when she told me that, I was like, "Oh, she might be a keeper because she understands what 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 humility is." Uh, right. From a, she she learned what humility is from a young age, and that's kind of a lot of what drew drew me to, to 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 stay with her. And sure enough, here we are still like having a relationship with one another. But that. That's that's I just find that that's an interesting thing that you kind of had an upbringing like that. It's crazy, man. It's cool. So yeah, yeah so, so ultimately, <laughs> what I gather is like, yeah, maybe you still get influenced by societal nonsense, but that if, if there's like a little spring that pulls you back into reality, you're not opposed to do that based upon what your childhood uh, enabled uh, uh, you to deem as normal. I guess you could say, right? So it's easier to unplug from the matrix if you've already plugged into it, which is, which it seems like for you. Oh yeah. Well, a hundred percent. Like, um, for for example, like uh, growing up, uh, Rodney's saying the same thing, which is funny that he he had a, a yeah. similar <laughs> upbringing. What the fuck? That's weird. Yeah, like, keep, keep going. Sorry. But yeah, like uh, growing up, you know, like you'll get into like a group of friends, and there's like an obvious hierarchy to the circle, and then you find out very fast that you're actually at the bottom of the hierarchy. And I think when <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so whenever I found myself there. That's when I kind of, I would remember stuff growing up when my, when my parents would be like, yeah, you know, you have to, you, you can't really expect this from people or you can't ask for this. You have to, you either get it on your own or you just ask from family. Cause it, like my family's Indian. So they're a little bit different. Like they expect sometimes you have to ask for help, but they're always like, if, if you can't ask, you have to do it on your own. They're like, don't expect anyone to like, uh, don't expect freebies without having to give something in return eventually. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, Crazy. but yeah, growing up, I, I was like, yeah, you, you have a bunch of friends and they're all cool with you. And they're like, yeah, man, you're, you're part of us. You're part of us. And if there's any slightly competitive scenario, it's like, boom, they're over here now. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, and th that's the funny thing is I, I, I found, although I found myself being, I guess, somewhere middle of the pack, a lot of times just lower of the pack. I felt like I could almost fit in, with, like in high school, I could probably – fit in with everybody it's just yeah. my, my my qualm was having to to like i i probably could have played athletics at least gone into wrestling or something the, the problem was i couldn't keep my grades up because i didn't really care to fit in with academic circles because i just thought st school was really stupid just based upon how they yeah. did things uh and then obviously i didn't like hanging out with jocks either because they were incredibly annoying and i think the only people i really like uh that i kind of fit in with were the nerds but yeah. the problem was that I wasn't very good with grades, and they were, and so I could I never really fully fit in with them. I saw. I, saw I, mean, I would just hang out with Mexican people. That was kind of my my biggest thing. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um. Shit, I lost my train of thought. Uh, no worries. Oh, what, what was I? What was I gonna say? Uh, what were they gonna say? You you had you had mentioned before that because because of your because we were talking about testosterone and Rolo Tomasi's perspective on testosterone right, right. and then that segued into a, a, a conversation that that or a topic that you had brought up from something that I said in, in an HBS course and so uh, in the HBS course I oftentimes what I try what I try and do in HBS courses is do whatever I can to get people to to understand what their archetype is and what the, like what their archetype is and how how and that they need to acknowledge what the archetype is so then they can eventually overcome it and then become leaders. And the, what I'm, what I'm going to try and segue this conversation is, is I'm going to try and kind of like funnel you into a path, Chris, and I'm going to see, I'm going to, we're going to see where, where, where it takes us, but I think it's going to be helpful for you. And it's going to be helpful for a lot of practitioners. And, and I think, I think, I think it should leave you not more bewildered, but probably a bit more like, Oh shit, I'm going to have to do something. So I'll, I'll, I'll explain it towards the end, but you were talking about before that, uh, at, at, at some point, I mentioned peons. The fact that, that in many regards, peons don't understand what it means to have to do big work. And that generationally, if you come from a, a lineage of peons, it's going to be hard to, over, to, to understand how the world works because you've never gone through the steps. 
you had mentioned something about that. Why did that seem impactful to you? Is, I'm assuming that's because of your your background, where you came from. Why did that seem impactful to you, Chris? Um, man, it's it's hard to say. I just remember when you, you were talking about like uh, most people are, are peons and they need to to they need to overcome being peons. They need to stop being peons. And I, I just had like a really strong emotional reaction to it. And I think it's because I think now that I think on it, I think it's because like most of my, my life, I've, I've probably considered myself a peon just because of where I'm from. And uh, just, you know, my family, like, for example, like uh, Indian people in general aren't looked at that high on the social ladder. Hell no. Exactly. Right. That's why I've always gotten along with them so fucking well. Yeah. So, yeah, but, go ahead. But, but then when you said that, I, when you you said it, I'm like, damn, I was like thinking about my family, where like some of my family members are at, where I was at currently. I mean, I wasn't in a bad situation, but it was it's, it wasn't where I wanted to be at. And then it kind of I just had like this, this cascade of like thoughts through my head, like, damn, there's like I got to fix this. I got to fix this. I got to fix this. And it, it's it's more like like my entire life. I felt like uh, for the most part, I have to constantly prove myself to people. You know, like I don't have, I don't think Indians in general have much of a uh, advantage. Let's put it that way, as opposed to being like a, if I if I was like a a, a blue hair a blue eyed blonde hair white guy, like I would automatically have approval to some degree, right? Even when I train people, bro, like when people come in, I could see them kind of like giving me the stink eye, like oh this guy's gonna suck because he's Indian or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So well, it's like, well, in in all fairness too, you look very ethnic. You you look like you could be a. a a mixture of different things, but you having dark skin, I'm sure, is not uh, is yeah. definitely is definitely not helping you, right? Well, well, so, you know what the fu- the funny so, thing so, is, hold like, on. Um, a, qu- a quick question about that, Chris. Yeah. Do, do you does you recognizing that situation give you a quote unquote traditional victim's mentality, or does that make you have to work even harder to figure your shit out? Interestingly enough, growing up, I was I was actually thinking about this last week. I think the first like ten to twelve years of my life, I was primarily raised by mom. So I think because my mom had a, such a big influence on my life, I, w- I had that victim's mentality. And I think I got it from my mom, believe it or not. In my teens, my dad really started to get on my ass. Like my, my dad, like I don't know if you, like Indian families, the dads beat the kids. So he would like whoop my ass if I wasn't in line. And then um, once my dad really started checking me, then I, I started to get away from the victim's mentality, I would say. Yep. So, yeah. so when I was a kid, I was pretty much a fucking data. Um, it was tough to get out of it though, because once my dad started checking me, I hated him. I'm like, I hate this God damn, asshole. Chris, yeah. this shit is, but that blows my mind, bro. Because some of the people that I've recognized that that get this shit the fastest, it, what it seems like a lot of times is their parents. Like, let me put it this way: my mom was alpha, and so was my dad. My both my parents would whoop my ass. Yeah. That was kind of the whole thing. <laughs> like, my, my my dad was a little bit crazy. He hooked up with a firecracker, and then uh, my dad was was, was a, a bit he's a freaking dominant motherfucker too. And so the funny thing is, it's like, uh, time is like my, my childhood, especially during my teen years was very similar. I just think that's funny that, that you kind of crossed that same path, but I tend yeah. to, it, 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 that is interesting. Yeah. Keep, keep going. Um, but yeah, man, like once my dad started getting more uh, involved, cause the thing is my dad, bro, like since I've been a kid, as, as long as I can remember, my dad's just been working his ass off. And, um, like he started working like an oil refinery, and then he when we came to the states, he worked like some really shitty jobs, to to where he opened his own business now. So like my dad was pretty much absent at home for a lot of the time because he was just working, but uh, once he started like making a little bit more effort because he saw us going through like uh, okay it's in the teen years this is where the kids kind of go astray, and when I went to school in New York, I went to school in a bad neighborhood. It was like close to the projects, so he didn't want me getting like um, you know like caught up in some bs over there and then yeah i mean it was rough like i i, I could tell you man like there's some time thoughts went through my head like I'll, I'll fight my dad right now i fucking hate this guy <laughs> but, oh <laughs> that's but, crazy uh, bro but not man looking back at it looking back at it i, I appreciate it, like the, the the tough love he gave me because not only did it kind of like set my 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 perspective on what i'm probably gonna have to do moving forward it helped me with how to deal with people as well how to deal with like uh, women, for example, just watching how my dad dealt with my mom was a big thing too. Um, but yeah, man, yeah, my, my dad was like, uh, yeah. 
you, you, you had a, a male role model there ready to, to, to guide you. So, so I guess this, this is the question that, that you're, that you're arising. This is a, I feel like you're, you're a part of, we're a part of each other's generation at this point and responsibility for all the, the things that people have made in the past. And so essentially the, the funnel that I was going to put you on is like right now, you said that when you first came into this industry, you weren't making uh, very mu much money, but now you're starting to reach a point of, of, uh, of uh, financial stability, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, when I yes. first came in, well, number one, when I first came into FP, dude, like this was, like I, I've had to reset my life on multiple occasions because just from moving from Trinidad to America was a big life reset. Then there was a point where we moved from the East Coast to the West Coast. That was another life reset. Then we moved back to the East Coast. And then, like, just going through college, then I started, like, doing jujitsu full-time. The switch from jujitsu to FP was probably the hardest because um, when, when I switched from jujitsu to FP, I lost my entire, entire social circle. So, like, eight years' worth of connections that I had and networking, I had nothing. And then when I, when I started doing FP, I had – usually, like, if you start something, like, yeah, your friends will refer you, this, this, this. You know, you have, like, something to fall back on. I had, yep. like – this is almost nothing to fall back on. So when exactly. I first when I first started, I, I was uh, I was working other jobs. I was working like a security job, like a bunch of shitty fucking jobs, just to kind of like make ends meet. And then um, once I started to really kind of become a little better at applying the training, because learning the training itself is very difficult in the beginning as well. Um, then I was able to start generating a little bit more money, and then eventually got to the point where I was able to okay. I don't want to stay in New York anymore because I want to move somewhere where it's more sun because I'm darker. I need to get more sun on uh, yep. every day. So then I was like, okay, let me go to Arizona. There's no FP here. This is like a great spot to start building some traction. And, yep. um, and now I'm here. So yeah, I'm definitely like because I'm the only person here that's on the map. Basically, all the clients get funneled to me. So it's it's a it's a nice situation I have here. Yeah, definitely. Well, th this is the thing, man. Well, you, you're starting to report similar things that I'm hearing from multiple practitioners, and, and it's coming down. The, the question comes down to where where I'm, I'm getting this question more frequently from people saying, "Bro, like I don't I don't know how far I want to go with this. I, yeah. like, I, yeah. I, I don't know. Do I do I want to expand, get multiple practitioners in here, and run this facility and become a business person or not? Because I'm sure that question is popping up in your mind, right? You're probably thinking." Do I want to have to manage people and, and tackle more yeah. tasks and do more shit, right? Yeah, hundred percent, man. Like I've I've never been the best at managing people, and I think that's partially due to the fact that um, I don't know if it's because I lack lack emotional intelligence. Like I don't. No. It's hard. It's hard for me to sympathize with people sometimes. Like sometimes I'll be very blunt, and then people will be offended. Um, and then it's like, do I want to push people away that starts working in my gym because I'm a little bit confrontational? Uh, I, I, I guess you learn that within time, bro. It's, it, it, what I, what I tend to find is that, uh, I guess uh, when you say emotional intelligence, you mean just mean being able to read where somebody's emotions are at and trying to meet them where they're at, I guess, or is that what you mean? Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, uh, it's like you, it's like taking their, I, I can, com I can be completely butchering this by not understanding emotional intelligence. But I think it is. I don't like understand what it is either. I'm just trying to see where you're getting. <laughs> yeah, I, what I get from it is like you sympathize what, where they're at, and you try to like, you, it's like you want to get your point across, but you don't want to like just, like you don't want to bury them into the ground, right? Yes, yes, yes. So, so, okay, so I, I guess my the, the the what I've always thought about for myself when it comes to trying to develop people. I mean, if you have if you have clientele and you're working with them, bro, and, and you're helping them figure their shit out, you're emotionally intelligent. I, I think it just comes down to that. Sometimes people have unrealistic outlooks on on how hard the world actually is to navigate. And sometimes you have to be a little bit cutthroat and say, hey, look, bro, either you – this is what I, I think I told people. Is, and I think you were you, – you did HBS3 or HB – you were at HBS3, right? That's what the one yeah, was. I did the, the recent one, yeah. Yes. And so I did four courses in that time frame or whatever. But um, I was talking about – what was it specifically? Oh, that nature has a demand. And, and right, that yeah. people, people want nature to slow down for them, but nature doesn't slow down for people. Nature just does what yeah. it does. And either you, either you, you uh, meet the demand or you don't. It's as simple as that. It's either you, you, you can operate at the speed that nature requires you to operate at or you get eaten alive. That's, that's essentially where it's at. And if a person can understand that and they're understanding that they have to 
get their their act together and that they're the one that's not operating at the speed of nature. I usually give those people the time of the day and I say, hey, let me let me help you out. Let me see what I can help you out with. But if you have yeah. people that are like that have unrealistic expectations about how the world works, what they what, what they're doing and whether it actually contributes to solving problems. That's where on mine, I'm like, OK, bro, you got to fucking go because I, I can't I can't deal with I can't deal with your nonsense. It's like if, if I if you can't do the basic math of one plus one equals two and see yourself as part of the mathematical equation and the fact that you're not solving helping solve the problem and that you're actually causing more problems there's nothing you could do with a person like that in that situation to help them bro so i think a lot of times it's it's i, I think social intelligence oftentimes just pretty much comes down to whether you if you can do the math for one to know when something's going to work or when it's not and then to take it a step further whether somebody else is doing the same kind of math because if they're not right. then it doesn't it doesn't matter what you're going to try and do for them bro so I guess I, I guess uh, I'd have to understand whether the, the circumstances to whether you you get that or not. But ultimately, I think the only way you ever really there's there's no uh, there's no replacement for having life experience, man. And so I, based based upon what we were talking about before, and I guess I might as well just get into it. Um, let's say let's say when you look at these mask mandates and shit like that, I know you're in Arizona; they're not that strict with it, right? But if they is, issued yeah. another mask mandate, let's say sometime in November, or December, would you be very happy about that? Uh, nope. Neither would uh, I. I'd be I'd be extremely agitated with it because I, as much as COVID might kill loads of people, like who are very very weak, it 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 tends to not kill people most of the time. Instead right. of thinking about like how to manage people that are really, really weak. What I did, and obviously I, I, I want to try and strengthen those people that are very weak. My, for me, the solution is how do you make people very, very strong to be able to be resilient to a virus like, like this? What could you do to make them really strong to be able to fight back against the virus? That seems very, very practical to me. Am I opposed to vaccines? Obviously not. Am I opposed to being forced to take a vaccine? Yes, I think you should be given an opportunity to, to, to participate in, that, in, a, in a scientific experiment. Uh, but there, I'm assuming they're still going to give us that. But ultimately, what, what I'm get, getting at, though, bro, is that the world is becoming increasingly more dysfunctional on many fronts. And the only way that we're going to change that is if we grab the, the bull by the reins and then we start guiding it in the direction where it needs to go. Because if we don't, then the, then the powers right. that be, the people of influence, who are out there are going to be the ones that take the narrative. So pretty this is what it comes to. You're like, ah, I have financial stability. You know, it's nice. It's good. And, you know, like, do I really want to put my body through all this untrue bullshit, all this extra stress to have to, like, persevere? Because at the end of the day, I'd like to live a good life. Well, the question that I'm going to, I'm going to ask you are, is the leadership and the general masses and are the general masses of idiots going to enable you to have that, that potential reality for that much longer when you think about it? Unless, yeah. unless you and the people that are around you say, "Hey, look, we kind of have to, we have to kind of grab the bull by the horns ourselves because these idiots have no idea how to handle it." That's where I'm at. That's the decision that I've kind of right. made for myself. And a long time ago, I was just I looked at the world around me and I said, and I've I've had regrets about what I've done, but at the end of the day, bro, after coronavirus and all this shit that's happened, I'm like, uh, you know what? I'm I'm glad I'm doing what I'm doing, and I'm glad that I'm having at least some level of impact. Because at least there's an alternative for people to go to, and that there's a, there's a hope that there, that we can actually make a change out of this. Because I don't agree with the direction that the majority of society is going in. Uh, I don't think they know anything. Like I know, I heard that Elon Musk is uh, he's he's planning on um, on on like opening up his own restaurant chain, and I'm like, okay, is that restaurant chain going to be grain free? Is it going to be polyunsaturated, uh, fat free? Are, are they going to make sure that they have no industrial seed oils or anything like that or any uh, hydrogenated oils in their food? Because as, as far as I see it, if he's the guy that's going to be running the show, I don't know. I know it's him and his brother, but I don't know how far they even understand what a good diet is. Are they going to try and have everybody become vegan? Because if that's the case, and that's the narrative, then I'm like, they, they still don't know what the hell they're doing. So for me, it just comes down to that if, if, if we – or to take this mindset of this passive mindset of saying, look, we don't want to adopt responsibility. We don't want to pressure ourselves to have to freaking live a more difficult life to, to, or to uh, take on leadership. Then what we are essentially doing is giving, uh, what we're essentially giving is the opposition of morons who have no idea how to run things, who are taking the responsibility uh, of, of, of the burden of leadership. 
to take the narrative and then shape our lives. So the question comes down to, to this, Chris. Do you feel that you have a better approach to living than the Joe Rogans of the world and all the other people that use drugs, than the people who are in, in Silicon Valley who are freaking ha have us glued to technological devices, who feel that we should just shoot people up with whatever uh, substance? Do you feel that you have, or based upon what the, the tools that you've been given and the, the values that you have, do you feel that you have a better alternative to attaining better health than these people or not? That's the question. 100%, without a doubt. But oh. here, here's what I would say, too. It's like with the tools, too, and, you know, the values and the, and the knowledge that I have now, you know, just from FP and taking courses with you, it's, I, I can see this being a problem for other people as well. It's like the more you know, the more problems you see. And it's like, can you deal with the anxiety of having to fix those problems? Yep. See, yep. that's one thing I struggle with sometimes. Like, I'll have, like, a long work day, and it's like, shit, my SI joint's still fucking compressed. It's still achy. Um, like, uh, I have, like, in the next month, I'm going to actually have, because I, ha I, ha I got mercury fillings as a kid. I need to have this operation and have them taken out so I'm not getting poisoned for the rest of fucking, you know, for the rest of my life. Yeah, you got to get you know, that like, taken out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's like, but, but you know, also, F, like, just using what, what I have, it's giving me the resiliency to be able to tackle those problems without having, like, a, you know, just falling apart. Yes, yes. And well, so the, but the key point is, I, I feel if I didn't feel that I had a better approach or that we didn't have a better approach, I wouldn't try and adopt leadership to try and take over. I, I feel I've, I've come to recognize how stupid people are, even at the most powerful ends of society. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've, I've studied it well enough and I, and, I, and I know enough about it now. I don't want to speak on too much of it, but I know enough about it now where it's like there is no conspiracy in life. There are no conspiracies. There aren't. There is no Illuminati. The people that are at the top, it's not that they're malintended. They're just stupid. They're just dumb. <laughs> they have no idea how reality works. They're, they're completely detached from physics and how reality actually works. And really what it comes down to is if we don't take the bull by the horns, these idiots are going to be misguiding it everywhere, making it more wild and rambunctious. And guess what? We all have to go on, on, this, on the ride of a very, very rambunctious bull. And until and since they have no idea how to restrain this bull, we we're gonna get chucked off along with these idiots. So yeah. if we if oh, I'm keep uh, so the people that are asking if I'm gonna keep this up, this is gonna stay on because this is these are the kind of videos that I definitely want to keep on this page. But ultimately, going back to it, Chris, if you don't adopt that responsibility, what you have to realize, bro, is that you're giving all the morons the narrative. You're giving the yeah. idiots the narrative. And my well, perspective is, I don't think we should be allowing the the idiots to take the narrative as to where we go as a society. Well, yeah, well, here's the thing. I kind of realized that a while ago because the reason why I – the reason why I even opened my own space, man, is because I just didn't want to work for anyone else if I can't control the direction of how it's going. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Like, um, Absolutely. It's like and, – uh, and the other thing is –